to call the meeting of the traffic. On one second. I'm sorry? One second. Oh. <coughs> okay. Now we're really ready? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to call the meeting of the Traffic Safety and Parking Commission um, on Thursday, April 13th to order. Um, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance, which I guess I will be leading us in. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual. And justice. Oh. Okay, um, let's move on to um, roll call and then Mr. Wong, and then we'll do the. Would you like to lead us to roll call? Commissioner Lee. Present. Commissioner Martos. Here. Commissioner Ng. Here. Vice Chair Rebellos. Here. Chair Israel here. Thank you, um, Mr. Wong. Uh, give the information. Thank you for tonight's meeting. It's our first meeting in hybrid mode. Uh, there are three ways of communicate for the public to communicate. One will be uh, up at the back desk. There's a request to speak card that you would submit and pass to uh, tonight. It'll be Mr. Fuentes. The other is if you're uh, watching it via Zoom. You can do the raise hand feature. We will look at it, acknowledge it, and then uh, let the chair know. And then we will uh, open your mic to speak for roughly three minutes. And then the last one is uh, via email at public comment, all one word at burlingame.org if there's something. And I believe we do have a handful of uh, public comments that came in. Oh, thank you. Great. Okay, um, let's move to item four, approval of minutes from the last meeting we had, February 9th, 2020. Um, were there any corrections, um, alterations to the record? Okay. I, I move we accept them as submitted. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and vote. Commissioner Lee. Yes. Commissioner Martos. Aye. Commissioner Ng. Aye. Vice Chair Rebella. Aye. Chair Israel. Aye. Great. Okay. Next, we'll um, move to public comments. These are on non agenda items. Members of the public um, may speak about any item not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to suggest an item for a future council agenda may do so during this public comment period. The Ralph Brown Act prohibits the city council from acting, well, in this case, the teaspoon, <laughs> um, from acting on any matter that is not on the agenda. Um, I understand we do have some public comment, so uh, there's no one here in person, but um, we may have email or public comments. Yes, we have five. Five uh, email or Zoom? Five email. Okay. Would you like to read those to us, please? Um, the first email is from Donald Ackley, and it's about bike lanes on California Drive. Excuse me. Um, what, do you have a microphone? Oh, is it not on? Maybe I should speak a little bit. Oh, that's good to it. Helps, yeah. So, bring this forward here. Okay. Um, Again, that email was from Donald Ackley, and it's about bike lanes on California Drive. Um, the email says, the, artic the journal article was the first uh, that I heard of this. I know I don't go or follow working of the city plans on a regular basis, but you say that there was a reach out to the city residents. I talked to my neighbors on Crescent and Barrelay, and not, no one, not one knew of the project taking away lanes of traffic and putting a bike lane seems to be at least to be money not well spent. I talked to my auto mechanic and he was totally in the dark about this new bike lane. He says there that there's no way that he can run his shop with the lane in place and the parking being removed. 
just putting in my thoughts on this, maybe do a business by business survey to make sure that this is going to work for them and their customers. And next email. Thank you. Um, it's hard to hear. Are you? Yes, I am. Too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe closer. Yes. Closer. No, I don't think closer. Maybe just louder. Louder. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Then better. Better. Yeah. The next um, email is from Jay Beard, and it says to Burlingame staff and city council members, the owners and tenants have not had any input or prior notification of the bike lanes proposed. According to uh, the business owners, they have not been notified in writing or in person. This change will affect all of the businesses in the district on California Drive. The Burlingame City should have a road and traffic study of this community to determine the effects of implementing this change of the city's busy roadways. It really seems that the city needs to listen to the community to better understand the needs of the business and the individuals who frequent this traffic zone. Sincerely, Jay Beard. Thank you. Sure. Um, there was just some discussion that um, the California Drive bicycle lane is not on the uh, agenda. This Cor time. Correct, this is just public okay. comment. Okay. Um, go ahead. Okay, the next email is from Leslie Beatty, a comment for a public comment section of Teaspoon Meeting. Good evening, and I hope all the commissioners are well. I'd like to request that you add a future agenda item addressing traffic routing and enforcement plans in, in the instance of closures on El Camino Real, both emergency and planned. With the storms this year and planned construction, ECR has been partially or completely shut down several times. In these cases, traffic is disrupted, often creating unsafe conditions at ECR intersections or in the neighborhoods directly east and west of ECR. Our neighbors out for morning walks, kids crossing streets on the ways to school, anyone on a bike and neighbors trying to pull out of their driveway are all subject to unpredictable and unsafe conditions on the street. It would be ideal for the city to put in place traffic routing and enforcement plans that could be implemented as needed along ECR. Secondly, I suggest that the city publicly recognize the tremendous effort and bravery of the Burlingame School District guards. They really do keep our kids safe. Thank you. And there was a note. This is not for a BPAC comment, but a personal comment. Um, can I just interrupt the the last comment that you just read? Um, I I didn't hear the uh, name of the person. Uh, Leslie Leslie Beatty. Oh, Leslie Beatty. Could you read the second half of it? There was a sure. What's about crossing guards? I couldn't quite understand it all. Um. So the crossing guard. So the second portion said, "With the storm this with the storm this year." and planned construction, ECR has been partially or completely shut down several times. In these cases, traffic is disrupted, often creating unsafe conditions at ECR intersections or in neighborhoods directly east and west of ECR. Our neighbors out for morning walks, kids crossing streets on the ways to school, anyone on a bike, and neighbors trying to put out their drive, pull out of their driveways are subject to unsafe um, and unpredictable conditions on the street. It would be ideal for the city to put in place traffic routing and enforcement plans that could be implemented as needed along ECR. Secondly, I suggest that the city publicly recognize the tremendous effort and bravery of the Burlingame School District crossing guards. They really do keep our kids safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Ms. Beatty who made that comment? Yes. Okay. If you could speak up, it's hard for us to hear. Okay. It has to be louder. And louder. Stronger. Okay. Um, so the another email from Miss Beatty, and it's BPAC comment for uh, traffic safety parking commission meeting item six A. Should I hold off on that? Yes, yeah. that's an okay. agenda item. And okay. also um BPAC comments would be done in the like community group section of the meeting. Okay, and there is another item for 6C. Okay, then we'll hold off on those until we get to that, those 10 items. Mm -hmm. um, and no one on Zoom, right? Before we move forward. Uh, no raised hands. Okay, thank you. 
All right, we'll close public comment. Um, and so where are we? We will now move on to discussion action items, um, starting with item 6A. Um, um, Mr. Wong, would you like to? Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Israel. Uh, we'll get the presentation queued up. And so for tonight, um, we're going to be talking about, briefly talking about the Truesdale Murchison Davis project that we were awarded a grant for. But tonight, we're not going over the details, just go over the process and get you guys, get your appetites whetted for what's to come as far as uh, the additional or the public outreach that'll occur and then when it'll come back to. The so this is just an, a bird's eye view. Over. Bird's eye view, give you like, uh, just to give you a little bit of the background, like where it was in the bike pad master plan. And uh, um, yeah, how, how it looked there. So you guys don't have to go look it up. Okay. Oh, Sorry, the screen we're not using. Anymore. Yeah, it, that, not until next time. So bear with us. These will be powered up at some point. One Friday, we had uh, the power was coming on and coming off, coming on all day. And so we got sent home, but apparently those surges fried some of the land. All right, thank you. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, please. All right, so the background on this is. Uh, CCAG, we were awarded a TDA Article Three grant for this. Uh, and with this, we uh, had identified bike ped uh, plan projects. And the project we, uh, was selected as the Murchison Truesdale Davis Drive. The uh, project in our uh, application uh, wanted to support safe routes to school, make the connectivity with the neighborhoods. And for this grant, uh, we were receive uh, 400,000 of the TDA grant funds. And that was the maximum we could ask for for a construction project. Um, next slide. So from the bike pet master plan, for those of you who have uh, reviewed it recently, these are kind of the, uh, some of the alternatives that were developed for not all the streets, but many of the streets. In this particular case, Truesdale and Murchison were identified where we, some options were put out there. And then you can see on the bottom, Right hand corner, there is kind of uh, in blue is uh, the percentage of folks that supported the uh, or uh, supported this option. So these are options that we will show to the community, but we will be this this in addition to others, right? This is kind of the starting point. This has been vetted. We're not going to start from scratch from zero, but we will start with this. And for Truesdale, what's going to be what's going to occur there? Uh, proposed to occur is a lane diet to drop it from two lanes in each direction to one lane in each direction, maintain parking and put a bu buffered bicycle lane in. That's one of the options. And then we have a design team that we're working with and their goal is to generate some others if we can or some uh, uh, hybrids of this or some other uh, versions of this. Uh, next slide. Murchison, if you look at uh, the bottom right, it uh, received quite a bit of support. And I think the reason is Murchison is shared between us and the city of Millbrae. Uh, the city of Millbrae actually has the improvement that you see on there already. So we're just mirroring it on our side where we're putting in the buffered, uh, where you're doing a road diet and we're putting in the uh, buffered class uh, two facility there. So uh, this one, it'll still go through the same process even though it's on the other side, but chances are what you see here is probably what's gonna occur. And lastly, Davis is not uh, one that we, we uh, had done something on, but it's been identified. Uh, actually, go to the next slide, please. If you look there, it's uh, the BIS Mills neighborhood bike route. This is uh, the rankings from the Bike Ped Master Plan. This was a seven. It was identified as a bike boulevard, a class 3B. because uh, So in that case, as you know, Davis, Davis is a residential street. Uh, there's no, there's parking on both sides and that those are meant to be retained. 
but uh, we, we'll look at it. Again, we'll reach out to the community. We'll uh, notify them. So we'll get to that. Uh, next line. Truesdale and Murchison, uh, it all rank, you know, seven or six and a half. It's, it's actually in the next group. These sides were uh, consecutive. And again, identify as short projects, uh, short term projects, but we'll be able to work on them now. Uh, that's where they ranked. And then the big one, the last slide is the uh, next, I'm sorry, next slide there, uh, where we you might remember this from previous presentations. Uh, it's the outreach process. So we've identified the CIP project. We've gone through, we've selected a designer. We've awarded it to them. We've had our kickoff. So right now we're the box that's dashed, the rectangle that's dashed. That's where we're at. We're getting it ready to do our first community outreach meeting. Uh, ideally, that's going to be in person, probably at the, hopefully at the community center. We'll, we'll sit down and we'll first we'll, we'll show we'll show what we have here, go through the presentation, but uh, we'll also talk about what's been happening out there, as well as maybe we'll have some other options that we'll share with the, the community as a whole at that time. Following up on that, whatever feedback we get back, the next slide, design development, we'll tweak it, and then the next meeting will be either another community meeting or it'll be uh, held here in chambers as a teaspoon meeting. And then we'll go from there and then eventually, you know, get out and hopefully we get the support for all these, go to council and then let the design team finish their work. And with that, that is um, kind of a quick overview of that. And uh, hopefully we're gonna be having that sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bong. So um, really it's almost more of a informational item. It's um, informational item, but if you have any, questions on the process or, uh, yeah. Okay, before we take any commissioner project uh, questions and keep in mind, this is very early stages. So we're not gonna get in the weeds today, but um, we're really early in the process. It sounds like we do have some public comments on six, you said 6A, I think 6A, is that correct? 6A. Yeah. You, you want me to take it? Leslie Beatty. Okay, um, why don't we uh, open it to public comment and if you please read the two that we received by email and then let us know if there are any on Zoom. There is a raised hand um, on Zoom. Take that person first. Okay. Thank you. Manito, are you there? Yes. Hi. Good evening, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. All right. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I I support this project. Obviously, this was something uh, that Li Shamai, uh, the previous uh, city's uh, program manager, worked closely with BPAC to develop, and it's a very well crafted grant application. So uh, kudos to the city staff, uh, Andrew, Michael, and Alicia for uh, putting this project together. I think this is going to be a work, very worthwhile project. Um, the, the couple of things that I wanted to uh, comment on is it, it, it'd be nice to, uh, to see a map that shows exactly the limits of, of each project because uh, Richardson, Truesdale, and, and Davis, like does it go all the way to California? Does it go all the way to Mills High School, for example? I know Truesdale crosses the, uh, the hospital, um, but it, it would be good to confirm the, the, the actual exact limits of it. Um, the second thing I wanted to point out was that both Murchison and, and Truesdale were paved uh, fairly recently. I think Murchison was paved in 2019 and Truesdale was paved in 2020. So it's uh, it's kind of unfortunate that, you know, we've got brand new paving, uh, brand new pavement and, and asphalt there that's uh, um, it's pretty fresh and uh, flush with the ground. And it's unfortunate that we're gonna have to uh, grind out the, the stripes that are there uh, to put in the bike lane. I think uh, looking forward, this would be a good opportunity for us when uh, the street's getting paved to uh, get a look ahead, maybe a couple of years uh, so that we can uh, put back striping for free after the paving project and, and not have to, to do a grant. Um, the, the third uh, thing I wanted to mention was that Davis is also a critical one because that's going up to BIS. Uh, so my hope is that there is some speed reduction measures that are associated with that project, given that bike lanes aren't going to fit, uh, like on Trusail and Murchison, but that is the key way for those sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders to get up there. So I hope 
there is some plan to reduce speeds in that section. And then lastly, I hope as part of this, that the commission will uh, consider lowering the speed limit on Truesdale as part of the bike lane project, especially in front of the hospital uh, to either 25 or 30, because right now it's 35 miles an hour and that really doesn't fit with the, with the safety needs of that neighborhood there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, any other Zoom comments? No. Great, okay, could you please read uh, loudly <laughs> the two uh, email um, comments for us. Um, this is from Leslie Beatty. It's BPAC, louder. Uh, this is from Leslie Beatty. Uh, BPAC comment for a teaspoon meeting agenda item 6A. She says, hello, thank you for sharing the information that these bike projects will be moving forward. We support the conceptual designs proposed as they calm traffic and provide access by bike to important destinations. We noticed that there was no mention of what will happen on Davis Drive if Davis Drive is to be the designated that was the previous timer. I've restarted um, on my phone. Uh, let's see. If Davis Drive is to be the designated bike boulevard for BIS, it must have some traffic calming applied to it to be safe. It's not a breeze to make it up Davis Drive on a bike under the best circumstances, as it is reasonably steep. Add to it that BIS does not have lockers and the kids cart around extremely heavy loads on their backs. They are likely to be going pretty slowly. With the existing pace and volume of traffic, it does not seem possible that this would create a safe situation. We recommend you add the Davis Bike Boulevard into the BIS safety discussion so that the bike routes can be considered alongside the proposed car routes for a more holistic discussion. Thank you. That is the last. Oh, okay. That was just the one email then. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, great. So next we'll move to commissioner questions. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw the hands go up on both sides. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, okay. But I will be raising. Okay. So, um, you know, <laughs> the way we'll go through this is this is not, you know, this is just a question not to offer any pronouncements. We are not expected to make a motion um, or decide anything this evening. Um, uh, I saw your hand go up, Commissioner Ng. And it's more a question on procedure. So, I, I mean, relative to that comment, right? So, we have two that we have some preliminary plans that we can see ahead of time. Davis is you know, still in process, but Will we see a preliminary one before we kind of evaluate all three of them a little bit more in depth? So it's just more, when will we do something for Davis before we actually get into the nitty of actually discussing it? Sure, thanks. Uh, sorry, I'll clarify. The bike head best fund, that was just kind of get us in the ballpark. So the consultants, when we have that first meeting, they'll be showing those as well as some other options. And so you'll see it then. Okay. So you can uh, be able to listen what the public is and then make your own determination. That second meeting we'll have, after we've tweaked it a little bit, then we'll bring it back. And then that's when you guys get to really dig into it because it, you guys will be, it'll be, you've seen it before, you've heard the public discussion, so they will put those things together. Okay, it's more, we don't want to look at it for the first time to no. make the final decision. No, no. Appreciate that. That's, yeah, so. get a couple of bites. I'm just saying which, which uh, orange square, so it's the first one, not the second. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good. We, we're not even at that first green box. Yep, so. okay. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. I had the same question, so I'm skipping my question. Uh, Commissioner Lee, any questions? Yes. Um, thank you. So just to um, clarify, is the, the true sale one bike lane lanes, is that from Quesada down to California Drive? What What is the scope of the project? Yeah, I'm sorry. I should I should have that on here. I believe that's the case, uh, but I will uh, I will. It, it's it, it'll be it's in our uh, should be on our website update. So we, is that from California. To I believe it's from uh, California to Casada, both of them from Murchison, as well as uh, uh, Truesdale. Davis should be from uh, again up to Casada, but uh, what's that first street it's on? Uh, 
Davis. Oh, oh, Al Al Omar. Al Omar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. but uh, we'll confirm that for you guys. All right, thank you. That was one question. And um, chiming in with a couple of comments we heard, I also had written down, um, I'm hoping the speed limit will be considered in the um, bike lane planning that to consider reducing it to 25 or 30. Particular. Sure, and that again, um, will that be we have that first discussion again? These are starting points just okay. to get us in the ballpark. All this will be discussed. The traffic calming features for a class 3B on Davis will be discussed, possibly lowering the speed limits. Although, uh, Truesdale is a tricky one because it is arterial and it's multi lane from in front of the school and it will continue to be at this point. But those are things that we will discuss. At that point. Okay, and then I had it written down, um, you know, one of my top interest for this year with our committees or whatever was to make sure that bike lanes actually go through the intersection, that they're marked. And I'm hoping that that would be part of this bike planning with, is that the green dashes of the bike lanes actually go through the intersections so that they're part of the bike lane, the intersections. So that was we'll look at that. Although what okay. you're talking about are conflict uh, lanes that usually it's a driveway to inform people, but uh, it's something we, we can look at depending on what, what it looks like. Okay, and then I had uh, just, I don't know if I should say it now or when we talk about the BIS safety improvements, just that the two are kind of tied together. Maybe I'll talk about that one then. And the only other thing is I did go over and look at the Murchison bike lanes and I thought the Mill Braidside was really good. So if we could mirror that, just flip it on over, I thought that was great. So thank you. And just a point of clarifying on uh, Mr. Valesco's comment about, uh, it, yes, it has been recently resurfaced. Oh. However, uh, the bike ped master plan hadn't gone through and we hadn't developed it. So what they put their side in thermoplastic, which is much more durable. We put ours in paint because we had oh. said that we were going to have to peel it up, but we had to put something down. We couldn't leave it. Even with the master plan, we wouldn't, there would have been a duration time that we would have had. So we kind of anticipate some of that. Yes, it's unfortunate it wasn't done in time, but we will take care of it. Okay, and I'll reserve my other one for when we get over to the BIS safety improvements. Thank you. Sure. And Vice Chair Revelos, okay. any questions? Yes. So um, the first question is, do we, when can we anticipate community action number one? You know, I'm going to check with uh, my colleague on that, but we're, we're trying to set it up soon. We've, I think we've gotten everything ready from the consultant, so it's just a matter of now finding finding the date and finding a slot over the new community. So hopefully, like I said, sooner than later. Like the summertime? Uh, typically, we'll try to hit before the summer because in the summer, we're not going to get everybody, right? Everyone's going to be taking off on vacation. Fortunately, we've passed spring break for most of all. This is last week, so mm -hmm. between now and the summer, before oh. school lets out, is hopefully the goal. Okay. That's okay. good. And then um, I'm not judging. I'm just saying that's good. Thank you for the answer. And then um, the uh, I, I just I have some comments, but I'm going to reserve those. I just wanted to sort of, in a way, echo the the green lanes crossing the intersect through the intersections. And I I do. There's one that I drive through all the time, which is at California and. Truesdale outside of the BPD. And the green lane does go through the intersection there. I just want to point that out. But I want to go uh, through the, uh, fi my final question is, uh, it's just it's, it's just a, for clarification on the, on this page here. Sure. PMP priority ranking, uh, the number four down, Truesdale, it says from city, start at city limit. And I'm so I'm just wondering what that is because I don't think no that that's my bad I, I circled that box because it's <laughs> the upper box I wanted to include so I just not to nitpick I'm not nitpicking I'm just because I don't know so we'll get all but that thank, that thank segment you. <laughs> thank you wow he's good I'm not good I'm just um yes I don't know go ahead I'm Commissioner Ng has one more quick question and he only asked one before it's. You know, let's it, do it. <laughs> and actually, it, it's along the lines of what uh, Commissioner, one of the commissioners have mentioned. So the speed reduction, we had talked previously about, I think it was SB 37 and needing that to pass before doing it. Is there any status update on that? Just curious. Not not, not, not that we have. Because well, right now, the speed limit has been reduced in front of the school. It's 25. 
and the rest of Truesdale, I believe, is either 30 or 35. But uh, yeah, we, we're we're trying to find out more details on it. And well, not to get into it, but a lot of agencies are the same way because of it kind of hung up right now on what to do. And I believe that was what needed to pass in order for us to do that across different areas, right? So it could be yeah. for the schools, also in the downtown areas that we talked about before. So. Um, um, great. Okay. Normally we would move now to commissioner feedback, commissioner comments, but I feel like, this, oh, oh my goodness, commissioner Marto. Oh, we forgot. Oh, <laughs> please from Tahoe, let us hear your questions. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. It's a new process, new equipment. It's all good. And I'm not even there. So I'll just jump in if you forget about me. Uh, through the chair, Mr. Wong, uh, I might have missed it, but what is the preliminary plan for Davis Drive for the bike lane? Sure, through the chair. Uh, it wasn't one of the ones identifying the bike ped master plan. It with a figure like you had seen for Murchison Tree Sale in the presentation. It it's show, listed as just a Class Three B, which is a bike boulevard. So that's just uh, Sharrows with uh, some. As Mr. Velasco pointed out, some traffic calming. So whether it be speed humps, striping, additional signage, bulb outs, things like that, that that's something I'll be looked at. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and we can discuss all that at the uh, the community meeting. So okay, that'll be good. Um, I, I do like the idea of extending the bike lanes from Millbury and mirroring the bike lanes from Millbury. I, I think that's a smart idea. So I hope that gains a lot of acceptance with the public. Um, that's all I had, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Martos. Um, okay. Um, normal, as I was starting to say, normally we would move to co comments and you know basically analysis assessment, but we're so early in the game. Um, I think that that might just kind of be um, unnecessary at this stage. If you all agree, I think mm -hmm. it would make sense to save this for when we have some more uh, stuff to sink our teeth into and really get into the nitty gritty. It's early days. Is, um, does everyone feel okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Wong. Um, very, I, I'm excited to see what we come up with in the next stage. Um, let's move to item 6B. Um, this is receiving presentation and obtaining feedback for the 2023 annual resurfacing update. Okay. We got the presentation up. Mr. Wong, do we usually get a presentation and resurfacing every year? No, uh, but we're going to, I'll give you the reason. Okay. Doing this a little differently and, and what you might expect in the future. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so our annual resurfacing project. Uh, Next slide. So we use uh, the city public engineer, uh, our staff, we have a third party that goes every couple of years, they evaluate all the streets. They basically drive the streets and they grade the streets ranking from zero to a hundred. Uh, and then they, they, we get a report that shows us each street segment. In general, our city is actually pretty, pretty good. It's a uh, 76 as far as the condition of most of our streets on average. Some obviously better, and I mean, I, I'm sure you folks know some that are worse, but a new, basically a new street uh, resurfaced with asphalt is 100. And then some of them, we usually don't. There are other treatments you can do that won't, it looks like a new street, but it's just more of a coating to help preserve it. That's a little lower score, but for the most part, our streets are 76 and the orange line, we're the blue line. The orange line is roughly what San Mateo County, the averages of all the agents. So we're above the average in the, uh, in the county. Uh, next slide, please. So based on these PCI scores, um, as well as the available budget we have that year and uh, coordination with other, not only city projects, but other projects. If there's a conflict, if PG&E is gonna be doing some work on the road, it does not make sense for us to go put it in and have them tear it out. Although we do have a moratorium for most parts. Once we've paved the street, someone can't just uh, cut into it with for three years, but that's happened because of certain emergencies, but um, let's see. Uh, so combined with that, uh, the my colleagues uh, working on the resurfacing balance all those and then generate streets that will be resurfacing that year. 
And so for the uh, 2023 project, they looked at these uh, H segments. Uh, well, actually, I would mention one other thing. Another thing that we do when we on some of these, you'll see dig outs. And so you'll see know those as patches, right? They've cut out a certain section that's been really bad and they'll just replace that. They won't resurface the entire street from face of curve, face of curve. So these are the streets uh, that we looked at. And so normally, like you said, I'm correct, you were correct, usually don't see this, but what we've been doing is as part of uh, resurfacing, uh, we have a complete streets. So we need to kind of look at it and see what other uh, pedestrian or bicycle improvements can go on there. So now having the bike ped master plan that helps significantly because if we see it's a class 3B facility, we can start putting down sharrows or it, obviously if it's a bike lane there that's already been there, we will we'll refresh it, but it allows us to look at it. And so previously we've submitted that list, shown that list to uh, the community BPAC for feedback. Um, and that's tonight, that's where I'm just gonna kind of check the box for our resurfacing crew because they wanted to have the report back out. But in future, I think we'll share the list you know, it'll be you no. Know, these are the streets for our annual resurfacing project for the entire community to comment on. You no know, different, and then we'll take those comments at a certain point, and then uh, come back and do this again. So, to your point, that you usually don't see it, but you are seeing it. Next slide, please. Thank you. And so, these projects, we tried to spread it out throughout the city, so folks just don't say you've never been around in our area for a while. But, um, yeah. Uh, next slide. So the comments, uh, we got comments for five locations uh, from our community BPAC. One was beach airport, beach and airport. Uh, rather than re reading, I'll re try to read just portions of it. Uh, this is this area is a hotbed for bikes and peds and definitely needs uh, to be included in the intersection for bikes getting over to the Bay Trail, adding additional pedestrian crossings. They recommend Basically, they recommended uh, putting, pushing this one off because there was so much going on. And so uh, the re my colleagues in resurfacing said that was fine. They'll look at, try to look at in the 2024 project, but it may require even more outreach because of some of the changes. So we'll see where we go from there, but they have removed it from this project. Adeline, two blocks next to El Camino, high visibility crosswalks along Adeline, El Camino. Uh, that's Caltrans, so we're we not touching a lot of it. Add, <coughs> excuse me, add yellow crosswalks and advanced stop lines on all four parts of Adeline and Balboa intersection. Ultimately, the block of Adeline between El Camino Real and Balboa should have a widened sidewalk since it is heavily trafficked by families walking to Lincoln and to people who frequently walk in the street to pass each other. Could we widen the sidewalk mid block and taper it at the ends? Uh, we are making the uh, crosswalks high visibility along that stretch of Adeline with this resurfacing project. And the sidewalk uh, work, we usually tr do some of it, but in this case, uh, we're gonna redirect this question to our group that does works on the sidewalks. Currently, that's a five foot sidewalk, which meets current standards. And there's a planter strip, and but we'll, we'll let the, uh, Folks doing the sidewalk uh, know if they, they want if they can do that or if they if there's a need to do that. Next is Burlingame Avenue, three blocks east of California. We'd like high visibility crosswalks, advanced limit lines at all these intersections. We believe that these should be stripes as school crossings because they abut a property on which a school high school is located. We will be doing white cross. We did take a look at it. But we were recommending white cross, high visibility crosswalks at all these locations, similar to what we've done throughout Lion Hope. Uh, number four is Anita and Burlingame Avenue. Police red stripe the curve in middle, in the middle. There used to be one here, but it was removed. You can see what we mean by the truck park that reduces visibility. Uh, so staff went out there actually along with uh, uh, Councilperson uh, Stevenson. And we actually, we did add some red curbing to the extent that we we were, uh, we determined that was necessary, but we will add a limit line, uh, advanced limit line at this location, at this intersection, as well as slightly the signs up high, there, there's a, the signs higher than 
you would see most signs, but it's within the range. And I believe it's there because you, so you can see it further. So we're, we're gonna adjust the sign so it's a little better visibility on it, but we'll maintain its height just in case something parks there. But uh, that one, we uh, will not be ex extending any more red curbing. Uh, Burlingame and Bloomfield Road, we'd like to extend curbs visually with paint since people blow through that intersection. And we were looking at this intersection as part of the uh, Lion Hope traffic calming project. So with that, next slide. The project's been advertised. Um, we anticipate this project to be at the city council in a couple months and to be able to be in time for uh, starting construction this summer on it. So with that, uh, take any questions regarding the resurfacing. Thank you. Thanks. Um, before we move to questions, um, is there any public comment on this item 6B? Yes, there's one email. I'm sorry, one email? One email. Okay. Did you, you read this one already, I thought. Oh, no, sorry. This is also for Leslie Beatty, and it's public comment for item 6C. Next oh, next one. So yeah. Zoom comments or email comments for item 6B? Uh, no Zoom as of now. Okay, great. Um, then we will move to commissioner questions. Um, oh, Commissioner Ang, I see your hand up. Again, it's just a clarification. The comments themselves, who are the comments from? The community BPAC. Sorry, I wasn't clear on that. Uh, this, so we originally reached out to them, provide them the list. They, these are the comments they came back with the list. Okay. Sorry. No, no problem. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Martos, you had a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have any other questions? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. Commissioner Martos? I did. I did. Thank you. Through the chair, Mr. Wong. Um, it, it, are the projects budget limited? Is that how we came up with these projects, or is there some other criteria that you use to? Um, prioritize these projects. Oh, sorry, could you repeat that first part? I couldn't quite hear. A little bit louder. Is it? Yeah, sorry. Is it? Are the projects budget limited? Is that how we came up with these? This set of projects, or is there some other criteria that's used to um, prioritize the projects? So, um, if you can go back to slide three. Uh, we start with a budget, so we will get X amount of dollars that we're, we might be requesting for the, pro for the project, say $2 million, $3 million. And then based on the scores, we'll take try to do some of the worst streets or bigger streets. Again, on, on, when you look at this, the bigger the street, the more you can do, the bigger impact it has on the score. To get to improve our number, but it also takes up most of that budget. So we're balancing that, like how many streets we want to do, how big streets we can do. These, if you notice, most of them are local streets. Some of the bigger arterials we might get grant funding for. So they take that into consideration where we'll use our local dollars for the local streets more so. Uh, and again, if there's a project in conflict, we tried to avoid that. So maybe that's one of the streets we were looking at. And then that's a street we may not be able to do because there's a conflict. So it, it's, there's not a straight algorithm to figure this out, but it, it's, a, it's a lot of weighing and balancing things, if that makes sense. Yeah, it sounds like highest value, more bang for the buck, kind of. Um, and and that, that's rational, that's reasonable. So thank you for explaining that. Um, any other questions, uh, Vice Chair Revelant? Thanks. So, um, just uh, for the sake of record, I just I'm asking a question. I know the answer. Mm -hmm. I hope just know that in advance. This does not include El Camino Real 101, 280, or the ramps on and off, right? Correct. Obviously, El Camino is Caltrans, as well as most of the. Uh, the highways. These are local streets. And like I mentioned, some of the bigger streets, California, uh, 
uh, true, well, we're doing some work on true sales. Well, uh, true sales is a good example. Even though we're not resurfacing, we do get a grant for that because it's uh, some of these streets fall on a, let's get a little bit too much into it. There's a larger one. There were some of these streets in our city, arterials mostly are identified to get you from one point of the city to another. So they're, they're more regional. And so those are more applicable to regional grant funds because of that. They're a part of the highway, even though they're not highways, uh, they're part of the high, highway performance system or something like that. So they're major roads, but obviously uh, Chapin isn't one of those roads or some of these smaller streets. And so we tried to use the local funds for that because it makes more sense because for those other ones, they're much bigger streets. We can get more dollars from it, from potentially from a grant. So, Understood, thanks. And then I have just a question about, I noticed some of these roads or some, some they're oddly enough, they're dead ends, but I'm, I'm familiar with them because I have a sense of exploration when I walk around. So some of these are pretty heavy, uh, you know, they're in light industrial areas. So I'm wondering about those. They're obviously affected by vehicle weight. So is there is that a different criteria for those as opposed to the streets? Is there a different funding source for those? It's a good question. Usually it's, we don't have it. There's not a, I don't believe there's been a different funding identified, but those streets too have been, they should have a, a beefier uh, design section. They're, they're not like a local street because you know the heavy trucks are gone. So that section was probably built up a little bit more, but, and, I imagine those streets have not been resurfaced in a number of, that's why they're in the condition they're at. So um, yeah, to answer your question that th th those have already been predetermined that those streets are a little stronger, have a deeper paving section. And they would have been impacted by the storm before too. Well, all the streets were, because once you get water into those potholes, they get, they get worse. I think that's all I had. Otherwise, uh, I'm pretty clear here. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Shirley? Any question? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, mine pretty much pertain to different school crossings. Um, could you just Adeline Balboa, Adeline Cortez, Adeline Bernal, do those three intersections all have four way high visibility um, crosswalks with stop bars in front of them? I think a numerous number of those are yellow school crossings. Are we able to look at that? I just think our school zones should be super high priority. And those will have the high visibility crosswalks, but those... Well, they have on all four ed legs and then... Well, they're always stopped. And so we are, I believe those we... Yes, we aren't. I will have to review that. Because I know that definitely they're high visibility, whether we put the stop bar. So we're trying to trying to standardize how we've been doing some of the crosswalks and versus a restriping project versus a full paving. But some of the issues with some of our paving is we go down one street, we don't do the other two, uh, we don't do the side streets. And so sometimes those won't get resurf those won't get resurfaced. So I would imagine that it's the Adeline that's like Adeline will, but then the other streets like the Balboa, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, yeah, those streets aren't going to be resurfaced. Right. So I'll have to look and see how we did that. Okay. But I, I, I almost, because I know on Burlington Avenue, we put those back, just high visibility. Those will be ladder crosswalks. And Adeline, I think it's the same, but I'll have to check out. Yeah, because currently, at least on Google Earth, some of them weren't high visibility. And they didn't have, I don't know if any of them had advanced stop bars. It'd be nice to have. Well, they will be high visibility. We're moving definitely towards that. And so now it's just a question of whether it's enough for us to put the advanced stop bar in and if there's enough resurfacing on that. But I'll, I'll have to look at that again. Okay. And then um, going to the next school crossing, Burlingham Avenue and Anita Road, that is where. Um, BHS students cross a lot. I actually went out and observed this one morning with council member Stevenson. And um, we had Washington school kids crossing and then the BIS kids cross there also to catch the bus down at Washington. So they're all going 
some of them are going southbound and then the BHS students are all going northbound. And I'm trying to understand why the city wouldn't want to put in school crosswalks across Anita and Billingham Avenue. I mean, considering that volume of students that cross and that BPAC also recommended it, I see no reason not to make it a school. Sure. Thing. Well, how do I understand that, please? Sure. And the guidance that we have is the roadway in fronting the school has high visibility crosswalks. In this particular case, Anita, it's while school children do use it it's not fronting a school or within 500 feet of a school. So with that, it's also an all-way stop. It is going to be high visibility crosswalk and it's an all-way stop, so. And I understood you're going to put in stop lines now? And will there be advanced stop bars there? Yeah. And yes. So it's my understanding, like when I read the guidelines for school crossings, that if you're on, if it's touching the same piece of land with no street separating it from the school property, because the school property is on that same chunk of land, that it would qualify as a school crossing. And I'll look at it again, but we've read it differently than you have it. Yeah, so. I read it a couple of times. And then my last intersection was Donnelly Lorton and Donnelly Primrose. Donnelly Lorton, I thought it not only needed the high visibility, but the advanced stop bar, Donnelly Lorton. That's a tough one to cross. I don't know if you do it, but I do that one a lot. There's a real good happy hour right there. <laughs> so that Donnelly Lorton and then Donnelly Primrose. I thought Donnelly Primrose just the high visibility, but Donnelly Lorton with an advanced stop bar. Do you know? Sure, and Donnelly Lorton right now, there's no uh, there's no always stop there. There's only a stop on uh, Donnelly. So is that what you're asking for? Um, well, I have to see a map. I'm not supposed to look at my phone for maps. Yeah. I don't know if it's the Donnelly side or the Lorton side. but There's only a crosswalk on the uh, on Don crossing Donnelly there. Crossing Donnelly, not crossing Lorton? Not crossing. There was one uh -huh. temporarily during uh, the uh, construction of the roundabout. Oh, I see what you Because mean. the uh, further down by stacks, there, the crosswalk there wasn't in place yet. So. Yeah. Okay. And then Donnelly Primrose? Uh, I'll look at that one, but I'm not, yeah, that one should have, if we're touching that one, it, it, we'll take a look at that one. Okay. But it, 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 I'm sorry, it wasn't one of the ones that was commented on earlier, so. Right, right. No, I just looked them all up. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, I don't have any questions. That's the nice thing about going last. Um, but, you know, again, rather than, uh, I think we made our, I think we were making our comments as we were asking our questions. So in the interest of being efficient, I think we can um, skip the comment section unless anyone has a burning desire to speak up. Okay, seeing commissioners taking their heads, I think we can skip that section and um, let's move to the big show of the evening. Mr. Sai, are you still awake? We will move to item 6C, the BIS school safety update. Um, we'll do the presentation first and then take um, public comment after. I'm not hearing you very well. Right. Um, Test? Yeah. Oh, maybe, okay. Uh, maybe put it up because you're tall. All right, um, you gotta get pretty close. Okay, so uh, good evening. Um, the next item 6C is about BIS um, school circulation plan uh, in partnership with the um, subcommittee from the TSPC. I, I think it's a joint presentation, um, but feel free to jump in at any time. Uh, next slide. So the goals of this project are simple, to reduce congestion around BIS school and to increase pedestrian safety of the children on their way to and from the school. Um, and there is some history with the subcommittee, um, with the school here. Sure, I'd be happy to um, fill everyone in a little bit. Um, I'm on the subcommittee with Chair Ng and was um, on it in the very beginning about Oh gosh, four years ago we started. I just briefly, we felt that the um, the safety situation around BIS was 
not acceptable. And we're looking for working for different ways to um, mitigate the conflicts that we saw with cars, bikes, children, pedestrians going to and from school. Um, we this has been a something we've been working on for almost three years. Um, uh, Leisha, when she was still with the school, Rusty Hopewell, who's the school um, wellness officer, um, and the subcommittee have all been meeting along with um, the Parisi consultants who are specialists in school safety. So um, the plan that we are um, showing you tonight, while we know is not perfect, is been thought about. Um, many different options have been looked at. We have gone over it, revised it, countless times. So again, while it may not be perfect, we felt that this was as far as, you know, as best as we could get it. And we felt that delaying any longer would be taking unnecessary safety risks for the kids. So we wanted to move forward. Um, and we think this is, we, we are very pleased with this. We think we finally um, hit the best, uh, the, <laughs> the best um, plan that we could come up with. Okay. Great, thank you. And um, also to add, uh, early earlier this month, we presented the plan to the school uh, superintendent and principal. Uh, and what you have seen today is a reflection of kind of the feedback that we received that day as well. Next slide. So this is the uh, first of three, and it is a satellite view of the area um, of interest. So BIS campus, um, the eastern edge of it is in the green circle on the bottom of the page. That's where the school drop-off circle is and where most of the, the activity is headed. At the top of this page, uh, you'll see another green box called the satellite drop-off uh, area. And this was developed um, recently by the school for parents to have a secondary option to drop off the kids because uh, the roadways headed to the main drop-off circle do get quite congested. So these are our two main areas of focus and the pathways that can... <clears throat> The um, street names are on each street in white. They might be difficult to see from this distance. Um, but they're not as important um, as the, the main drop-off areas. So we'll touch on that later. Next slide. So this slide um, kind of shows a series of arrows and directions that we have felt uh, can improve the school circulation. Um, So starting from the bottom left corner of the page, um, that is Casada, and all traffic originating from Casada is in a light green arrow. And you'll see the, the different pathways those vehicles can take, um, either dropping off on Casada or going through the school drop-off circle and then heading um, up Clarice and out that way. Likewise, from the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a dark blue arrow. These are cars originating from the neighborhood. Um, and, and the dark blue arrows kind of show the pathways that those vehicles can take to get to the drop off area. And these vehicles are also a part of the, uh, according to this plan, to exit um, the area um, up Clarice and then. <clears throat> Sequoia or Marco Polo. At the very top of the page, you'll see a yellow arrow uh, and that traffic never mixes with the cars from um, the bottom left or right hand corners. These vehicles essentially only drop off at the satellite location um, and then proceed towards Truesdale. So this is the overall circulation uh, and there are a few things that need to be done in order to facilitate this kind of movement. And that is on the next slide. So if we can start, um, maybe it'd be best to start actually at the top. 
So at the top of the page, um, we see the yellow arrow, which is vehicles coming from the eastern section of the neighborhood. Uh, they never mix with um, the, the green and blue arrows. They essentially only drop off at this satellite location and proceed to Truesdale. After the students are dropped off, we do need to facilitate some sort of crossing here. And so part of this plan is to add a new crosswalk uh, that is enhanced um, right at that location so that students from the satellite drop-off area can see towards the school. Uh, and this is where we can channel them onto one side or the other of Clarice. And that's shown to be the south side. And that'll be important um, later on. Um, why don't we move to the bottom left-hand corner of the page where there's a light green arrow. These are vehicles coming down Casada from Truesdale. So these cars have a few options. They can drop off at a new passenger loading zone right there in advance of the drop-off circle, or they can queue up uh, with other vehicles and uh, drop off in the school drop-off. But their exit is where uh, a change is introduced. Uh, at the school exit driveway, we're proposing a right turn only restriction. So this will um, reduce the number of conflict points uh, at this driveway. Before or as is today, when you exit the driveway, you can go left as well as right. Uh, and you'll be, and this is usually one of the main points of queuing where you already have a line of vehicles in the dark blue arrow waiting to get in the traffic, uh, the drop-off circle. And you have vehicles exiting the driveway, just trying to get back to Truesdale, choosing to left turn out of the driveway. Um, so to diminish that queuing, we're proposing the right turn only restriction. Uh, and, and that'll channel the uh, light green arrows and dark blue arrows, as you see on the screen, um, up Paris and then out Sequoia or Marco Polo. Um, another thing being proposed uh, to facilitate this reduced conflict area is uh, a crosswalk relocation. So you'll see that there, I think you can see it. Can anyone not see the relocate crosswalk um, shown on the, on the image? So that there's an existing crosswalk there that is uncontrolled uh, on the north leg of the intersection. And there are five or six different turning movements all happening on top of this crosswalk. And it's manned by one crossing guard. Um, with this crosswalk relocation, you'll see that there aren't many arrows overlapping on, um, on the new proposed location. So that's kind of the theory there. And, and this also jives well with the new crosswalk that we added from the satellite drop-off location. So remember, we're proposing a new crosswalk at the satellite location on the south side of the road. That channelizes most, if not all, pedestrians on the south side. They'll walk down Clarice on the south side, and then they will cross on the south side of Clarice and Casada at the new proposed crosswalk with much less complex points. We also have a um, kind of a, uh, an animation at the end of the presentation that explains this further if you wanna see it. Um, I think that would really clarify. I think the animation would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Why, why don't we go to the animation? Um, can you skip? to the animation slide. Just stop on the next one right here. So this is the exit driveway of the school. Um, the street going left to right is Casada, and the street at the top of the page is Clarice. So can you do one click? So these red arrows are different pedestrian movements that you'll see today. Can you click one more time? 
they all will cross at this uncontrolled crosswalk with the crossing guard uh, and proceed up the uh, pathway to school. The red arrows are pedestrians. Um, next, one more click. So this blue arrow, it, it's vehicles uh, exiting the driveway. Today, they can turn left and try and get out to Truesdale um, in that queue there. One more click. This darker blue shows a different pathway that exiting vehicles can take. Um, they can turn right, uh, cross the existing crosswalk, and uh, turn left or go straight. One more click. The yellow arrow shows uh, vehicles coming from the neighborhood, queuing to get into the drop-off circle, also going over the crosswalk. And one more click. Here's a, another blue arrow pathway shown um, vehicles coming down from Marco Polo and Sequoia um, that did not drop off at the satellite location. They're, they're coming down um, from the east and also trying to make a right and queuing in that, in that large queue, also crossing that single crosswalk. One more click. Uh, these are vehicles, these purple line are vehicles that are just going straight. Uh, maybe they dropped off. Um, <clears throat> you could represent the buses that drop off here as well, and also vehicles just trying to go through from Truesdale to the neighborhood. One more click. So we've circled the um, existing crosswalk that is uncontrolled, uh, and you'll see all the different turning movements that happen on top of it. So these are these are all potential conflicts that the crossing guard has to look out for. Um, every time one of the pedestrians shown by the red arrows uh, wants to cross. Um, and every time there's a conflict, that's, that's another source of queuing and delay that leads to the backup that we see today. So let's go to the next slide. So this is an, um, a representation of the changes that could happen if if the plan takes place as proposed. So the red arrow is the pedestrian movement. It is much more localized because we've channelized pedestrians at the main source, at the satellite drop-off to the east. Um, so most, if not all pedestrians should be on the south side. One more click. And they, <clears throat> The new crosswalk would be on the south side and it'd be, it'd be right where those pedestrians would be to cross. One more click. Vehicles shown in this dark blue can no longer turn left. Um, they're just going to be turning right out of the driveway. One more click. Vehicles from the neighborhood in yellow uh, still need to cross this crosswalk uh, and they're shown there. One more click. Vehicles that just came down. Quesada, um, if they're required to turn left, they would also not conflict with the new crosswalk. One more click. And essentially that's all the movements. Um, and you'll see there, there are much less conflict arrows that cross this alternative crosswalk location, which is in line with our second goal, which is to improve pedestrian safety. And we feel that uh, by relocating the crosswalk here, which with much less conflict points, um, that it'd be uh, an improvement. So that's the theory uh, that the subcommittee and staff and, and uh, school faculty came up with. Um, so with that being said, let's, uh, that was all the theory behind the crosswalk location uh, and, and, and things that could and potential benefits when you change the uh, uh, the circulation patterns. Let's go back a few slides. Here, here. So um, there are several infrastructure changes that need to happen in order to support this desired circulation. So we're going to need term restrictions signs and markings at the school driveway exit. Uh, we will have a crosswalk relocation that we just went over. 
we will have a new crosswalk at the satellite drop-off location. Um, and this is important to facilitate the crossing, but also to channelize pedestrians onto the south side as opposed to the, the north side of Clarice. Um, there is a new proposed pedestrian drop-off area on Casada um, in advance of the school drop-off circle that people have an option to, to use. Um, and uh, no westbound vehicles on Clarice, only during the school drop-off hours. And there might be some other turning movement um, restrictions needed uh, at certain times, um, but those will be kind of implemented um, iteratively. Um, and this is intended to be a, a first shot at kind of um, organizing the traffic here. Next slide. There are some additional considerations that we discussed um, in the past and as a part of this effort that aren't necessarily um, main considerations of the plan. Um, one is a new multi-way stop uh, at Davis and Marco Polo. This is something that staff brought to um, the TSPC in the past, and it was tabled. Um, primarily for the completion of the plan that we're discussing today. So upon this completion, we can likely move forward um, with that multi-way stop. Um, additional considerations also to enhance red curb uh, or enhance visibility by installing red curb um, at any intersection that's feasible. Uh, and also installing school warning uh, assembly signage uh, as appropriate on, on all appropriate approaches to the school. One thing that's not shown here, and I, I do believe uh, the school had touched up on it, it was the bike cage. Oh, yeah, sir. Uh, um, but that, you know, that's, uh, that's on school property, and that's something that they're looking into. Um, I can, I can point that out. It, um, if we, if it's okay with you, if we want to go back to the um, proposed <laughs> traffic pattern slide um, in the beginning, where you show what we want to do as opposed to what we, okay. Is it okay, Mr. Wong, if I walk up to the slide to point some things out, or do I have to remain at the microphone? I think the issue is folks on Zoom can't see you pointing it out. So maybe we can. Uh... Uh, use the mouse. Yeah, you can't use a pointer either because it doesn't show up. So we have to use the mouse on the even Ms. Winters is doing. So maybe you could call it out and she could try. Hmm. That work. You know, I what I was trying to do is really briefly summarize and show you guys because it's over. You know, it's a lot of stuff. Um, you you could try to walk down to. Yeah, I, that, that's the only way. I know, so I'm going to go use it after you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. When we first started on this, um, you know, I, I just to summarize the here we are. Whoa, this moves hyper fast. Um, so can, you can see the mouse moving behind me now. Am I on the right yeah. computer? OK, um, one crossing guard was crossing all these kids and all these kids. And so by moving this crosswalk over here, we've taken them out of this this crazy congested um, area of conflict. We also had heard that, I just want you to know that we are considering bike kids who are biking. This is definitely, we're saying pedestrians, but it definitely includes bikers. Bikers right now have to come up Posada and cross where there's no crosswalk, no uh, uh, crossing guard and park in their little bike cage here. New bike cage will be um, relocated here right at the end of the crosswalk. It'll be so much safer. Um, they won't be turning left against traffic. They will have a crossing guard that will be guiding them, and they will have a new location for them to lock up their bikes. Um, and I think, I think that was really just the main thing that that right now, uh, when Parisi consultants came and saw our current pattern, they said it was utter chaos, and they had never seen anything so bad. Um, and what we're trying to do is have kids. Who almost all the kids are crossing at the where this new inter 
new crosswalk will be, and it'll be uh, so much safer. It'll be so much easier for the crossing guard to focus on getting them across as opposed to having to worry about all these different um, kids who are coming from different directions as well as bikes. So I just wanted to point that out. I also wanted to point out that at the end, I'm really not doing well with this mouse, I'm sorry. At the end of Marco Polo and at the end of Sequoia on Truesdale is four-way stop, both intersections. Also Sequoia and Marco Polo are very wide streets. So although we're diverting um, or at least organizing traffic on those streets out of the, um, out of the congested area, because they are wide, um, I, we feel very comfortable that they can handle it much better than some of the more narrow residential streets that are um, in the neighborhood. That's all I wanted to point out, sort of just to summarize and add what the thinking was and some of the extra supplemental. Mm -hmm. Mr. Eng, is there anything that I missed or that you want to add? I was going to say there's, I mean, there's so many different constraints that we were working with here. And I mean, we must have gone through at least seven or eight, just since I've been on the subcommittee, iterations of the map and what we can do. You know, and a couple of things I think we really want to call out because I think there were some of the comments that uh, for sure we had made before, but trying to keep traffic away from going back into the neighborhood. And again, trying to keep Davis clear, knowing that there's other work that was potentially going to be done you know, along those lines to make that as, as it's part of the bike path master plan or as a bike thoroughfare, how do we divert traffic away from it, right? So that's one. Two is that, you know, we had a very spirited conversation. I think, you know, one of my first meetings about that, com uh, that intersection at Marco Polo um, and, and Davis as well. And that's something we intentionally wanted to bring back into the fold as we started implementing these plans. What are the ways that we can incorporate that in conjunction with this, in conjunction with what we're doing on Davis as far as, you know, for, for bike safety? How do we combine all that there and make it all make sense? So I think that's why we want to put that on the table. But I mean, even farther reaching ideas such as, you know, what if we had more crossing guards? What if we had, you know, Burlingame police helping direct traffic for some hours of the day? We explored all different types of options, you know, and trust me, we exhausted them all, you know, beat them up, toss them around. And, you know, again, we know we're not going to solve 100% of the issue uh, in this first go around. But, you know, I do want to stress that it is a great first step. And again, I'm saying this, you know, not as I've been on the commission, but my daughter is a seventh grader there. I have a son that's gonna be there in a couple of years. So I definitely wanna see some progress in this, but there's assurances that we'll continue to monitor this and make adjustments as we see fit. So understand that there's, there's gonna be some skepticism in some aspect of the plan, but at the same time, I think it's a good first step. I would like to see it take place, you know, in the, in the near future and hopefully before my daughter graduates at BIS. But um, at the same time, you know, we'll keep a keen eye on how this develops and some of the things that we see and what are some of the unintended consequences that might emanate from that and bring that back to the commission to discuss further with people. Perfect, perfectly said. <laughs> um, okay, I think that maybe we'll hold off on further discussion at the presentation and thank you so much, Mr. Sai, for, for working on this because we were at a standstill and we really needed um, sort of like, you know, just somebody to kick our butts and get us in gear. Um, let's take public comment next. Um, do we have anyone on Zoom? No one on Zoom. Uh, do we have any written comment, email comment? One from Leslie Beatty. Okay. We were hearing a lot from Ms. Beatty tonight. <laughs> She's been busy. Okay, this is... A public comment for item 6C of Teaspoon Meeting. Hello, thank you for your work towards making it safer for BIS students to get to and from school. We are extremely happy to see some movement on this very important area. With over a thousand students on campus located on streets that flat out can't handle the traffic, we support improvements that make it safe and convenient for kids to walk and bike as much as possible. We are supportive of your efforts to see if there is a suggested traffic flow of cars that can create a calmer and more manageable situation, including not, allowing, not allowing left turns on Claris. We add the following suggestions. Please add the most popular pedestrian routes and the preferred bicycle routes to this map so that it could be understood how these different modes will interact 
and identify any spots that need to be considered. We do not support taking the crosswalk at Claris and Caseta out. It is fine to add a second leg of the crosswalk, but it is unrealistic that kids will go out of their way to cross in the crosswalk. We should design for what we know that kids will do because they are humans and not what light we'd like them to do. Currently, the designated bike boulevard is Davis Drive, but in this design, it seems likely that Davis Drive will have heavy car traffic and will be unsuitable for a bike boulevard. We'd like to suggest that only the lower blocks of Davis be designated as a bike boulevard, Alba Marley to Marco Polo, and that bikes then set up Claris to correspond with the traffic restrictions that are recommended in this plan. Lastly, we'd like to suggest that the city reopen the topic of a second bike cage or moving the bike cage entirely to the southern end of BIS, which would allow the vast majority of kids biking to avoid the Quesada Claris mess. It is not possible. It was not possible two years ago because the school was starting construction of a new gym. That construction is wrapping up and it would be worthwhile to explore again. Um, thank you very much. Um, no other comments? No other comments. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now we'll move through the commissioners. Um, please, uh, we'll start with just questions. Um, <laughs> only please um, and uh, due to the due to time constraints please limit your comments to three minutes okay um, let's start with our long distance commissioner commissioner martos oh well allow me to raise my hand first okay thank uh, you what? I appreciate oh, yeah. that chair <laughs> yeah so well, let me raise my hand first anyway. you read my mind yeah no, I do have a couple of questions through the chair for Mr. Sai. Can you go into a little more detail on the drop-off area? Uh, is that going to be uh, white curb, yellow curb? Uh, what, what, what's that going to oh, look like? I could, I can probably answer that question. Uh, okay. Currently, right, currently, right now, where the ball field is. Um, North of the entrance to the um, BIS driveway is that you're allowed, parking is allowed. So this will now become a white loading zone. So, um, yeah. So, um, I'm talking about the loading zone to allow cars to drop off there rather than park. Uh, uh, chair, so I, I maybe I wasn't clear the drop off area on Marco Polo. Oh, that, um, yes. Yeah. Um, right now is an informal drop-off area. Um, there's there's maybe two parking spots in front of that L-shaped building on Marco Polo, and um, that building does have its own parking lot. I, you know, we could explore. I don't know that we've specifically spoken about um, having that be a white painted loading zone there. But even if we don't take those parking spots, there is there are no homes or businesses in that first stretch where the heavier yellow arrow is, and that's the area where um, that's the area where people are dropping their kids off. Okay, and, and will it be designated by signage that that's the drop off area? How will people know that that's a designated drop off area for BIS? Let me okay, so as is today, there are two unofficial um, drop-off areas, which is north of the uh, school drop-off circle and also at the satellite drop-off location. So again, the, they're, they're uh, unofficial drop-off locations. Uh, they don't have any curb markings or signage to indicate um, those uses. Uh, but in order to support this circulation plan, we would be able to do things like uh, a white passenger loading zone, along with a sign um, explaining further what the white zone means, which is passenger loading. Uh, and we can do um, time restrictions on that as well. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to make it almost intuitively obvious. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm not disagreeing. I think those are really important, but I wanna make sure that people are, are clear that 
uh, that's what those zones are there for, and, and they can be used for those reasons. So I, I would definitely support that. Um, okay, thank you for that. Um, second question, if I may, Chair. Um, if you could just speak up a little bit, though. <laughs> ah, yeah. Can you hear me okay? Um, maybe if, is that better? It, it's, it's a little muffled. That's it's muffled. It's, a little it's technology. muffled. It's not your voice. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. But FYI, I hear you all just fine. I, I hear um, our admin just fine. I, I think you're having trouble hearing us and her. Um, but OK, so I'll speak up. So my second question is about the circulation patterns. And I see a lot of one way arrows. Is that uh, going to be enforced? There will be signage. Um, and and like Hoover School, sorry, <laughs> and like Hoover School, like we have at Roosevelt and all the other schools. I mean, there's there's precedence for this where there um, we have signage that says, you know, no right turns during school drop off hours, and it has those hours. So that was the plan. And, um, you know, there would be parent education. Um, this would be, you know, like, like we had to do for um, Hoover, the new school. Um, and we would have um, a police presence to help educate and enforce, especially when we first um, would start this. Um, Mr. Sai? Right. So as far as um, information and education of the plan, uh, we would have necessary infrastructure to support the circulation. There'd be curve markings and signs. Uh, in addition, once the plan is finalized, it would be distributed to all the student um, parents and, and they'll be instructed to follow the circulation plan. And then the third, um, third and fourth methods would be school faculty kind of um, encouraging motorists to abide by the plan and also um, as a last resort we could ask for support from the PD to enforce um, some of the restrictions. Okay yeah I, I think the circulation plan is, is great. Um, you don't want um, a couple of people driving uh, against the circulation that would mess things up. Um, I would also suggest that as we educate the parents about the circulation, that it, it continues. It's not once at the beginning of the school year, that it, it is a, a regular reminder throughout the school year about the circulation plan so people don't forget. Out of sight, out of mind, right? And um, it's really important. I think this is a great plan. By the way, Mr. Sai, excellent job, Chair Israelit. And Commissioner Ng, excellent job on this. I really like it. Um, we just need to make sure the implementation um, is effective. So um, um, just a couple of suggestions there. Thank you. Yes. Um, That's all I, I have. I think that back to school night, you know, the PTA oftentimes, you know, every new class, uh, the parents are instructed at you know back to school PTA meetings, but yes, that ongoing education and enforcement definitely a big part of a major change like this. Um, thank you. Um, any questions, Commissioner Lee? Oh yes, thank you, Chair. So I have I have a few, and remember, I wanted to talk about the Davis bike lane as part of this. We're not so. going to talk about the Davis. Uh, bike lane. No, I, I oh. it, it affects Clarice it was what my comment was. Remember, I said I would talk about it now instead of earlier. Oh, anyway, yes. Yeah. Quick question um, before my comments. Does this mean during school hours that there's eastbound only traffic on those two blocks? Is that what those arrows mean? Or did we just not put? Correct. It's, it's one way traffic during school hours. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, am I to understand that up on Marco Polo, that by that L-shaped building, that is where the students tend to be dropped off casually? Unofficially, yes. Unofficially, yeah. Yeah, so, in that area. In that area. So 
for them to walk, what direction is that? South, back toward whence they came, it might not be natural to people to cross down by that word, no left, you know, to have a crosswalk there down there by the FT. Um, um, I don't understand. Yeah. So see the word no left at the top? Uh-huh. The, the uncontrolled new crosswalk that's proposed is away from where they're being dropped. It's uh, to the south, to the right of them. Oh, no, they're actually being dropped with a heavy yellow error. error. Okay, all right. Maybe a little bit where those trees are, but it would okay. be like walking half a block back. Okay, across. all right, that's good. Thank you. And am I to understand that that's a crosswalk that has a no controls there, no stop sign is being proposed there for students? Um, it's a new enhanced crosswalk, which means it would be like we were talking about a uh, flashing beacon, you know, yellow, um, high vis. We t we it wouldn't be yellow, I don't think, right? It would be white. It's, I think, is it still, is it? It's not a school. So we'll take a look at, but that we haven't determined um, yeah. this time. I think right. in terms of right now, there is nothing. There. <laughs> and there is a significant yes. number of students that are dropped off there. Right. That's why I'm so thinking it'd be nice to control. Anything in there is automatically an improvement. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be nice to make that a controlled intersection um, for the students to cross since there are many. And then um, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with pedestrians first and talk about that little bike idea. Um, then let's continue toward the school on, what is that, Clarice. See where the word no through? Mm -hmm. It is my understanding that that is also a casual drop-off area and that parents drop off at the RU and then they make a right on, oh God, Sequoia and continue toward Truesdale that they're dropping there. So when they drop there, the student is then on the north side of the street. They will not be able to uh, come up Clarice to do that any longer. So they will not be dropping off. Okay. So it'll be one way eastbound. Yes. Yeah, during drop off time. Mm -hmm. That's what, yeah. Okay. That's the thought. All right. Um, and then going back to the Davis Bike Boulevard, because it's hard to not refer to Davis when you refer to BIS. Um, so just that Davis as the children, because as you head west on Davis, you're with your backpack on your bike, you, you go slowly, but the cars are, it, it's really heavy on Davis. So it'd be nice if we could have uh, speed controls, like, like the speed humps like we have in Lion Hogue, every block going up Davis. And then to instead of the bike boulevard all the way up Davis to Quesada, an idea was to allow the bikes to come onto Clarice and come down to the school that way and have Clarice the bike boulevard, get them off of Davis that last two blocks and off Quesada, the block between Davis and Clarice to move them into that Clarice area where they'd be a lot more comfortable biking than on Davis, if there would be a way to address the student bicyclists coming up Davis. Through the chair. Cutting over to Clarice. Uh, they're not they're not being shown on here now of the bicycle traffic. So uh, great points. And that was one of the iterations that we had gone through. Part of the challenge of that is that now you're flowing bicyclists into the thorough, the egress, if you will, of where we want to put all the cars to exit northbound off of either Sequoia or Marco Polo. To your earlier question about the casual drop off on, on Sequoia, the observations were actually, there's nobody using Sequoia as the egress. And so this starts to funnel it out that way, which is again, away from the neighborhood in itself and away from pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Uh, your comments about the, the speed humps on Davis, I think we talked, that was already gonna be part of the, uh, consideration. the consideration. Um, so part of that, great take that consideration there. Um, I, I do understand the point about that last section of Davis again, because I live in the neighborhood. Yeah, It is slightly uphill. However, you're gonna have to go uphill one way or another. No, it, Clarice is also uphill. So yes. not really avoiding the issue. 
It's the issue of the motor vehicle Excuse traffic. Me. All you're doing is diverting traffic into where we're literally trying to move them out of the area. And so who's the them? I mean, let's, so there's the, the, kids on bikes and then there's motor autom vehicles. The automobile traffic that drops off the children and are leaving the area. Mm -hmm. That's who we're trying to funnel through Clarice and out either Sequoia or Marco Polo. So if you want to move the, the, the bicyclists into that area, you're sort of complicating the matter and you're starting from scratch again. You're sort of putting them in an area where they're going to now be the heaviest traffic. Possibly. Davis is pretty bad though too. All right. Well, it so should be better once we start diverting the traffic away from the neighborhood. So one of the, actually the earlier designs uh, that we had talked about with Mr. Wong was funneling some of that tr that automobile traffic through Casada that would that would egress towards Davis from Casada, and that was one of the main points that we had brought up as a subcommittee is that we actually want to keep traffic away from the neighborhood because of all the pedestrians and the bicycle traffic that would be coming from the area. Yeah, so I like the plan for motor vehicles um, circulation. I think it's definitely an improvement. I only see one uncontrolled crosswalk as an addition for pedestrian. So I do hope that Mr. Sai, when you talked about that, so going back to discussing the stop sign at um, that funky intersection, <laughs> what is that one? Um, that we add some pedestrian improvements and really consider what the, not what the, student bicyclists are going to do to get to school because I only see one uncontrolled crosswalk as an improvement and everything else is concerning motor vehicle traffic, which is nice. I mean, that'll help the parents, but it's, it's still kind of a doggy dog world out there for the kids who are not in an armored vehicle. Through the chair. Yeah. So when you say we're only considering the automobile traffic, I'm not sure I understand that comment because I, I literally diverting traffic away okay. from pedestrians so that one, given the limited resources of crossing guards and people overseeing where pedestrians are crossing, you reduce the conflict there. And two, is that you're trying to separate, if you will. Yeah, I understand all that. I've been doing this about 20 years now. So um, like where the word right turn only is, be nice to have a stop sign leaving the parking lot, I assume there is, where the relocate crosswalk left arrow, we could use a stop sign there that would help pedestrians stop sign up by the new enhanced crosswalk that would help pedestrians. So I'd like to see more pedestrian um, enhancements here would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That there's very little room for bikes to operate as is. That's why our main goal was first to try and solve the congestion issue, see if these slight improvements and slight organizational changes will improve the congestion. Then we can see how much space is opened up for pet, uh, bicycles because we all know where the bicycle cage is today and it's not in a great location. It almost forces a lot of the bikes, regardless if they take Clarice or Davis, to funnel them down Casada and then somehow cross to the bike cage. So we all know that's a problem today. And, and that hinges on uh, potential efforts by the school to add a new bike cage. So we all know that's happening, but until that happens, there's very little we can do because due to the location, they're forced to mix. Um, so I hope that sheds a little light on the bike equation. Um, also, Davis Drive as a bike project is happening kind of concurrently. So um, there are a few things. And also Marco Polo and Davis, we did say that uh, there was a previous multi-way stop effort that's going to pick up um, after this meeting. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Pai. Um, all right, Vice, oh my God, I almost called you chair. Not yet. Vice Chair Revelous. <laughs> what thoughts do you yeah, have? Years, no. <laughs> okay, uh, so I, I have questions more than anything. So one is a really amateur, shows my level of understanding of intermediate school. What's a bike cage? <laughs> oh, 
It's the lock, uh, the place to lock up the bikes. Okay, that's what I thought. It's a so. secure metal structure where they can put their bikes, um, okay. and it's chain link. That I got it, but because so, but so I guess because the way the context of the discussion is that that's sort of where the cyclists are originating the. Yeah, they're, they're coming, departing from. They're coming in. Okay, and so I wasn't sure if it was from. bike box. Yeah. Okay, no. I got you. I got you. Thank you so much. No problem. I only know because I saw it. <laughs> okay, so then the question I have is, uh, when you're coming out of the the drive there, and you hit that right turn only, and then you're going to make that left. Is that, is that just one single motion, or are there stop signs there? Is there going to be, what is, how is that flow managed? So as is today, it's, it can be done in one single motion um, and it'll remain as such after they've, you know, stopped at the driveway and then found an opening, they could do that in one motion. And there's the crossing guard there. And the crossing guard would be, you know, in the new relocated crosswalk, it would be out of the way entirely. So today, if they wanted to exit the driveway, as we saw in the animation, they've got to wait for all these different mm -hmm. turning movements and the crosswalk. So by relocating it, you know, there's much fewer conflicts. Um, and, and, yeah. So then what's the, what's the flow of the students at that driveway, the pedestrian? So they won't, you mean the exit driveway? Yeah. So they'll, the crosswalk will be to the right of the driveway. Uh, they don't really need to cross it to get to campus. So basically, any student that would be at that driveway would be intentionally going out of their way because it's not, it's not en route to or from the campus. It's they're kind of stepping. Yes, yeah. uh, but there is another scenario that is kind of touch up upon, but there is a bus. Uh, drop-off area. Uh, it, it's adjacent to the school drop-off circle, but on Casada. But the reason we didn't go over it in detail is because when that happens, it's a big organized effort with school faculty that kind of organizes the kids coming out of the bus to cross the driveway and then into campus. So, so, so I only had a couple of questions, but this is causing me to ask more questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> was there any consideration to just closing that loop, that drive, and making the cars stay on Quesada and drop and load there, and then that flow, just instead of having them dip into that loop, that the drop-off loop, why not just use Quesada as, and then you, you eliminate a couple of points of conflict, and you also keep the cars from having to re-enter and exit. That that was considered, um, and I think I was the one who said, let's just not use the loop, but um, what happens then is you have kids who are being dropped off where that, um, in front of where those diagonally parked cars are, mm -hmm. and they're crossing through a parking lot um, with teachers, and, and there, there are going to be cars that are going through mm -hmm. that, and they would just be sort of walking through. There would be a lot of conflict there, and um, uh, was not felt that that would be as safe. Whereas the safest thing is for them to pull off the street into the loop and they're gonna drop them off. There's a sidewalk right there and they're walking directly into the school. They're not crossing in front of any uh, moving cars. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, the, the school drop-off circle is more real estate. If we can make it work, it, it's definitely useful. Um, and look, a few things come to mind if we did close the circle. The dark blue arrow originating from the neighborhood, um, they would have a much more difficult turnaround to um, try and complete. They'd almost have to do a U-turn uh, at the drop-off entrance today, whereas today they can make a left turn. There's kind of space for that. Also, um, when the buses do arrive, uh, they would completely clog up that area for drop-off. And we also considered or we proposed moving the bus drop off to the bottom left hand corner where we've today proposed the passenger loading zone. Um, the school did not support moving the bus loan further 
because they need because it it, it hinges on the faculty operation um, to um, facilitate the bus drop off, and moving it further north was too far for them. So for some reason they thought it would be difficult to get a hundred sixth grade <clears throat> graders onto a bus behaving well if they were on site. Um, so we have to we have to go with their experience. Well, and one final comment is that if you close off the loop, to your point, the dark blue arrow that's going away from the neighborhood northbound on Casada, then you're basically forcing them to drop off on the eastern side of Casada. <clears throat> and we had also explored the notion of making that completely one way and having that as just the drop off, but there was a whole lot of complications doing that as well as enforcing it. So that kind of fell out of the uh, original plan, but certainly eliminating the loop was one of the earlier first things that we had thought of as potentially simplifying it. And along with what you're what you're saying, uh, Commissioner Ang, is then if we didn't have those blue um, people able to enter the loop, they would be dropping their kids off on that far side mm -hmm. of Kata, and then those kids would have to like walk all the way back to go across with a crossing guard. And we we were afraid that they would not do yeah, that. Ms. Baby's point, they're not going to do that. They're they going to start crossing, crossing forever to get dropped yeah. off. So we did think about all those things. And I think those are, you know, that's all a really good, you know, mental exercise. Well, why, you know, what if we did this? What if we did that? Um, and that's one of the reasons why we decided that we did need to use the, the school loop driveway to get traffic to move around. Turn. Mm -hmm. And bear in mind, it's also with the feedback with the school superintendent and the school chief business officer. So their feedback certainly lends a lot of weight to how they want the operation to be. Horseshoe driveways are the historically safest way for schools to have. Um, and if you look, they all pretty much have that. So that's what they like. Have you looked at, by chance, opening... Um, pedestrian access and bicycle access to the campus at the other corners of the campus so that they aren't even being funneled, that they could choose to come in, you know, at the other corners of the campus? Are, are there other routes that the kids can get in from the back or the side? No, there there is not really. There's a very narrow drive that only teachers are supposed to use on the far north. There And there's not really access on the no. The south. Well, because the other, back. the other side's also Franklin, right? So you're, <laughs> and they come in from Franklin side because that's yeah. the further away you get kids from cars, the better. No, thank you. So Any had, other? Had, had what, yeah, one more. <clears throat> so at the intersection of uh, at where the new enhanced crossing. Mm -hmm. The, the, my question there, it, it's just two questions. It's a two-parter. So I'll just ask them both at once, and you guys can just give me your, your thoughts about it. So one, I wasn't, I'm not clear if, so I'm, I'm kind of confused because north is that way. Yes. So, yes. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. So on the northbound, where the yellow, dark yellow is, coming to, with that's the dark yellow is the loading zone, loading and unloading, drop-off zone. Mm -hmm. So at the foot of that drop-off zone, at that crosswalk, is there going to be a stop sign or a pedestrian crossing sign, you know, to sort of enhance the crosswalk? And second, if no, it are, is is staff open to that? And there's no right or wrong answers. Just I'm just curious to know. We talked about um, having like on Broadway. I think with Mr. Wong and with Mr. Sai with a rapid flashing. I mean, it's going to be hard hard to miss, otherwise we wouldn't even consider that. Actually, let me just give the reason that I'm asking, because I used to drop off my wife every morning at the BART station, right, in Bay BART, and I'm guilty of it myself. You pull it in, and you know, there's a series of cars dropping off. The ones ahead are taking a little bit too long to drop off, so you pull out and go around those cars, and I'm concerned about a kid coming. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you know, here comes me in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And here comes a kid out from in front of one of those cars. So that's why I'm asking, is there going to be so, is there if, is there going to be something, a stop sign or something other than just the painted crosswalk to consider make those drivers consider the risk or to slow down. And if there's not, that's okay. I understand this is the early stages. But is there a an open mind going forward 
if there's a, a noticeable due date? Yeah, so the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think across all those dimensions, one is that I'm sure once the more detailed plan of what exactly it's going to look like, how big is the stop sign, how long, like, we can debate all that at that point in time, but it's been very prominently stressed by all of us that it has to make a lot of sense. It's got to be very high visibility. It has to, you know, it can't just be some paint on the ground and call it a day. None of us want that. And I think, you know, it's my earlier comment, there needs to be constant monitoring about what are the net effects of what we're seeing here, shorter term, medium term, and that we continue to revisit. No different than what we talked about in previous meetings. We want updates on some of the projects after they've already been happening. What's happened to them since, right? And I think this one is at the top of my list as to this never leaves the list <laughs> as far as we need to continue to monitor it. So, you know, again, I'm fully invested in this and I want to see this one through. You know, whatever iterations we need to make to improve it along the way, I think we should consider it. Very well said. Um, okay, I have no questions, obviously, <laughs> but I do want to make a comment. You know, um, it's hard being a traffic safety and parking commissioner when uh, when we we work on projects where the reason that we embarked on this to start with was to improve pedestrian safety, um, and and that was also uh, to improve bicyclist safety. And frankly, not once was improving the convenience of car traffic high on this list. So. Um, I just want to comment that that is our motivation. That has been our priority from the get-go. And I really am frustrated when people say that we are trying to do things to make traffic move more smoothly. That is not the case. Um, do you have any comments, um, Michelle? No, I mean, other than we went through a lot of iterations, tossed a lot of ideas around, I really appreciate it. Mr. Sides' work on this, uh, and Mr. Wong's uh, the date. Um, again, the collaboration I think with the school district was, you know, was really top notch. I think it was, it was a project that it took a while to get done. Obviously, I've been only in phase two of it, and <laughs> been here since phase one. But you know, I think it's significantly rewarding that we're getting to a point where we can see some improvements can be made. And again, you know, we'll continue to do so. And along with that, the school district is very appreciative. So. And I want to thank you, Mr. Wong. I, I certainly didn't mean to. Um, no. I mean, you were with us in the early stage, and we just got stuck. And it was no worries. Difficult. So um, I was going to mention, though, that having been out there with you and former Commissioner Wet in that section of uh, Posada between Davis and, say, the driveway, that not to, it was like leaving a rock concert. It's like a swarm of zombies. I say that. So just not having southbound vehicles on that section alone will be a big help for the pedestrians because we saw them in the street, in the street, three wide. I mean, just coming down. So minimizing, you know, again, working with the school district, we get everyone and help that poor crossing guard who has to watch two crossings and do one. I think for any of those folks in the neighborhood that's just north of Clarice, Again, this is working with the school district. Having them use just cross one, get on the south side so it's all focus, that'll be a huge improvement and get everyone. I mean, again, there's part of its convenience, but we're, 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 we're evaluating safety over convenience at this point. We get folks in their lanes, so to speak, both walking and driving. It'll separate it out better. And again, it, it's a huge improvement over definitely what I propose. So I, I do applaud Mr. Sai and the subcommittee for that. And you, Mr. Wong, we're, we're giving you credit too. Um, okay, we'll, um, we are, our um, question session became a comment session. And I think we are, um, we've talked about this uh, enough for everyone to feel comfortable. Um, so I will entertain any motions at this point. Um, I move we approve it as proposed. Any seconds? I second that. Thank you. All right. Shall we vote? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's you. <laughs> Commissioner Lee. Aye. Commissioner Martis. Aye. Commissioner Ng. 
Aye. So Vice Chair Rebellos. Chair Israelit. Aye. And it passes. And I'm a little teary eyed right now. <laughs> no, it's just it's just wonderful. I think this is a really good start. Okay, great. Let's move now to um, agenda item number seven, information items. Mm -hmm. um, is there any public comment for any of these items tonight? Um, none through Zoom, but we did receive an email from Manito. Um, and I'll go ahead and read it. Public comment, Teaspoon 413-2023, item 7A, engineer's report on California Drive. Can you start calling right here. Okay. okay. A public comment, Teaspoon 413-2023, item 7A, Engineer's Report on California Drive. Hello there again. According to the Engineer's Report, the 1.7 million contract for California Drive bikeway was already awarded by council and about to start in May. The California Drive project did go twice in front of Teaspoon, once in June 2021 and again in August 2021. In both cases, I don't remember any businesses commenting on the parking removal. It was never clear if they were notified about that specifically. In fact, at the August 2021 Teaspoon meeting, the chair asked, about outreach to the businesses and the city consultant and the city staff said it was too early on in the process, but that that outreach would happen if parking were to be removed. The chair also asked at the time, asked if a vote was necessary and was told by staff, one wasn't necessary yet. Earlier in tonight's presentation, there was a slideshow showing the sausage shaped slide of pu the public process. The second teaspoon box said, staff seeking teaspoon support. Does that mean a vote? The vote obviously didn't happen on California Drive. If it did, then commissioners might have had a chance to ask and consider input from the businesses. So my question is the intent for all future capital projects going in front of the commission, including those discussed earlier today, that teaspoon vote to support the project before it moves to council. I think this is a good idea. I hope the commissioners will consider making this procedural improvement and clarification. Thanks. Thank you for that comment. Um, okay, closing public comment then. There's no others, correct? No others. Okay, all right, let's... Um... Um, move on to community group updates. I think we don't have any this evening. I think we've already heard from DPAC to other uh, um, items. So then we'll move to item, and there's no other community group present this evening. Is that correct online? No other. Thank you. Then moving on to um, the engineering division reports. Mr. Wong or Mr. Sai, or whoever wants to. <laughs> okay, for the engineering report, uh, I think there are four items to update the commission on. The first is the Burlingame Station Pet Improvement Project over um, at Washington Park. Uh, I believe uh, you've probably walked by and seen it. Um, we've got, gotten a lot of compliments. It's a Measure A&W grant project um, that we received 600,000 from the TA. Um, to build, and um, <clears throat> the crews have done a pretty good job navigating the weather, um, and if all goes well, uh, the final stage should be happening next week, which is some resurfacing, and that'll be open soon. Um, the next item is the California Drive bike project. Um, just an update that the construction contract was awarded. Um, this was also a measure a and grant project that the city received uh, $800,000 funding from the TA. And um, <clears throat> pre-construction meeting happened in March and construction is currently on schedule um, around May. The third item is the BIS school safety study, which we've gone over today and, and that's what our presentation was about. 
Um, and the last item is the Berlin Game Pedestrian Safe Routes and Mobility Improvements Project. Uh, that name might sound not familiar, but it is um, basically uh, a group of about 34 projects that we put together and applied. And we took them from the master plan, uh, or at least most of them, and we applied for an OBAC2 grant, and we received uh, $200,000 with an $80,000 city match. Um, that just got approved um, recently to from the grant administrator. Uh, so we are moving forward with um, with that project. And uh, that, that's all for our updates. Great. Um, were there any updates on the Broadway, California intersection when um, we were talking about potentially removing parking and adding an, an extra lane for cars and moving the bike lane up against the curb? Do you mind me asking if that if there's any, I mean, you may not have mentioned it because there's nothing new since last time, but I just. Uh, uh, that, that is in the works. I'm not sure when we are slated to bring that back to the commission. Um, Andrew, did you, did you have that? Yeah, that, that's in the works and we will be bringing it um, in, in one of the upcoming meetings. Um, but that, that did reach. Talk about that item now and we'll add it as a future item. There's, we'll give you an update. Okay, and, and then the other thing that you um, brought up with engineering for, I think, was the Oak Grove, California intersection with the lighting lighting changes and those modifications. Um, I can't remember, was that something that was coming up soon? I thought so. Yeah, that, yeah. That, the, the Oak Grove, Carolyn traffic signal project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is waiting on the 95% design and, and we're still kind of stuck right there. Okay. So, yeah. Um, commissioners, did anyone have any questions or other? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Commissioner Martos, <laughs> would you like to ask a question? I'm glad I know this. Yeah, um, through the chair, Mr. Sai, uh, in the minutes from last month uh, or the last time we met, uh, there was supposed to be a survey for the Lion Hope traffic calming that went out in March. Did that happen? The survey did not happen yet. Uh, we ran into a delay with our contractor to gather data. Uh, we had to, essentially their contract expired, so we had to get them on board again. Um, it didn't make much difference because there was so much rain in the past few months that they would not have been able to collect volume data anyways, uh, but they will be going out soon. Um, and as far as the survey goes, um, so there, there was a survey that was sent out shortly after the project was put in. Um, and I finally got a chance to look at those results. Um, and there was actually uh, an additional column that people could enter in feedback. Uh, and, and that was one that, um, we're kind of thinking internally how we can follow up with those people because a lot of residents um, had suggestions with um, their contact information. And we were thinking about reaching out and seeing if their thoughts had changed over time. Um, that's one way we could do it, or we could just send out the survey again and just compare the the results that we get. So we're kind of still weighing our options there. Okay, I, I was I was under the impression that another survey since it's been a couple of years since the work's been done. Um, and uh, residents can evaluate or have evaluated the effectiveness of the traffic mitigations that have been implemented in Lion Hog area, that they would have an opportunity to comment and recommend things that uh, worked and things that could be improved. Um, so I was under the impression that another survey was going to go out last month. Is that not the case? That we're not going to send out another survey or allow? No, no, no. To You're absolutely right. That was definitely the plan, okay. and still may happen. 
I was just okay. pointing out that we, we came across some additional feedback that okay. we had not seen um, previously, which is essentially what we're looking for. Suggestions from the neighborhood. Um, and we had over 200 responses that were filled in with suggestions um, that I had a, I thought it'd be valuable to follow up with them individually because they did leave their contact information, but then, um, you know, we, we could also send out a, a new survey as well. So that's. Okay, is that is that the plan that another survey will be? We, we are deliberating, um, okay. but of course we're leaning towards another survey. Okay, okay, I, I think it's important. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna learn best practices from what we've done in Lion Oak, and I, I think it, it might, you know, be things that we could apply in other areas of the city. So I think it's important we get that feedback from the people that are living in those areas. So, okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Sai. Appreciate that. Um, Mr. Sai, it says there's a staff, like a staff report. Was there or attachments? Were there, was there something that you wanted to, to like a slide? I, I, there may not be anything. I just want to. No, I, I don't think so. Not with this uh, staff report. Great. All right. Oh, uh, Commissioner has also a question. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> this last one, Burling Game, Pedestrian Safe Routes and Mobility Improvements. Will we be getting a list of what those proposed improvements might be? Like, how will we look at those? And then my other question was um, the proposed um, Pedestrian safety improvements on Burlingame Avenue. That project had started about a year ago, but then we haven't heard anything else about those enhancing the crosswalks and all. Through the chair? Yes. Um, so, yeah, we'll try to get you guys something to look at on that. But uh, I believe the Burlingame improvements mm -hmm. are, are part of that project. And I think I thought I, and if I didn't, I apologize, but I, it, I had invited yourself and uh, Commissioner Ng to meet out there no different than I have done with yes. Commissioner Martos, and we'll take a look and see what your concerns are on that specific concerns. We can go over that once again. I know you've mentioned a couple of them, but we can take some time out and walk uh, the, the, the the downtown. Okay, all right, that'd be great. Thank you. Great, any other questions, commissioners? Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's nice to, it's really, I love this new, you know, touching base on, on the projects. It, mm -hmm. It's just, I know you're doing stuff, but it's just nice for us to hear. Um, so I appreciate the time it takes. Yeah. Um, all right. So we are now at the um, item seven police department reports. Thank you very much. Um, so as we uh, did not meet last month, um, I'm going to give the the month, uh, the March report for the February collisions, and then uh, followed by the April report for this past month. So for the month of February, there were a total of 19 collisions reported. Um, of those collisions, 12 were with another motor vehicle, five collisions with the parked motor vehicle, um, one collision was with a fixed object, and then we had one collision, which was a vehicle versus bicycle collision. Um, of those, one collision occurred on private property. Uh, that was a collision with a parked motor vehicle. Um, zero collisions involved DUI. Um, among the most common collision factors um, of that uh, group, we had unsafe turning movements, uh, stop sign, and also um, right of way or yield violations. Two month of March, there were a total of um, 32 collisions reported, um, which is a fairly higher number than the prior month, but um, I have some uh, thoughts on that um, as I finish up here. Um, so of those 32 collisions, uh, there, 22 collisions were uh, vehicle versus another motor vehicle. Three collisions were with the park motor vehicle. Um, six were uh, fixed object collisions and one collision was a vehicle pedestrian. Um, 
four of these collisions occurred on private property, one being uh, with a parked vehicle, and then three with another motor vehicle. Um, of those collisions for the month of March, one collision involved DUI. Uh, and then collision factors that were most common, um, by far unsafe turning movement was one, uh, the main one. And then we have um, some speed and unsafe starting uh, or backing on a highway, and then um, several right-of-way violations. Um, yield at stop signs, yield when entering a highway, and then um, we had one that was a yield for inoperative signals. And um, regarding the quantity of collisions, I just, um, when you look at the um, reports that I provided, um, I'm looking at the number of injuries related with the collisions for each month. Um, and in February, we had a total of nine collisions that involved some form of injury. Seven were uh, minor injury reported and two were um, major injury reported. Um, and just to refresh recollection on, on this, uh, major injury could be, um, it's any sort of injury. Uh, so perceived loss of consciousness, um, broken bone, um, any sort of laceration or cut would be considered major injury. So it can it has a wide range. Um, and then when we look at the month of March comparatively, um, we have a total of 11 injury related collisions, um, all of which were reported as minor injury, no major injury. So although there was a <clears throat> sizable increase in collisions reported in the month of March, um, the actual total number of injuries did not increase proportionally to that. Um, so I have, yeah. Thank you. Um, Mr. Um, Ng? Just a quick general question. Um, and I know it's not part of the fields that you use here for the normal report because how often do we have inclement weather? But curious on, did you did we see an increase based on some of the weather, you know, related type of issues that we had in the city, right? So down power lines, traffic signals going out. Um, I know just from my own observations that, you know, some of the intersections when the lights went out and there was mm -hmm. almost a road stop sign in the middle of it. And again, you know, winds howling and, you know, rain everywhere. People really observing kind of like the normal safe, like, okay, it's you know, taking your turns around the four-way stop. Mm -hmm. Any of those types of things captured in, in some of these? I mean, we'd probably have to dig a little more beyond that, but just general observation of <clears throat> might have caused some of the issues. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a, like an, an complete analysis that. I was yeah, like, you're just on hypothesis, um, commentary or anything. I will say there was, uh, when I was speaking of the um, collision factors, there was a yield violation for a um, inoperative signals. So I believe um, that was a collision that resulted from someone not yielding at a uh, signal that was out due to a power outage uh, resulting from the recent storms that we had. So there was at least one. That we know, of. but that was the only one reported um, that was uh, affected by inoperative signals, storm related. Um, yeah, and then um, for what it's worth, I think uh, we have a, um, a fair amount of younger officers in the department now, newer officers, I should say, um, who are you know in various stages, and some that might have uh, been recently on field training, and they take a lot of collision reports to get practice doing those things. So. Not all collisions are reported to the police, um, and uh, collision is not required to report. Um, so uh, that could account for a small um, portion of that increase. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from commissioners? Only two. Oh, oh, anyone else? I'll, 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 okay, Commissioner Lee? Yes. Um, on Page two, the bicycle collision. I, you know, rumor has it that that was a really bad injury. Oh, um, page two, the bicycle collision at thirteen hundred Rollins, near Carol Ann. Okay. So I don't know how those they, they're parallel. That's kind of weird. But I heard that was a really bad bicycle injury. You know, through the grapevine. And do you have any information on that one? And that's my first question. And can we design it better? To, not have that happen. So this one was written a little more in depth, um, likely because of um, oh, 
go read read through this real quick if you don't mind. So um, the re injuries reported for the report consisted of abrasions and uh, complaints of pain. Um, there were no, um, I think it because of the, they call it the mechanism of injury, a vehicle versus a bicyclist or pedestrian has the potential to cause major injury. Um, I think there was a combination of abundance of caution um, in treating the uh, bicyclist. And so, um, but I don't see anything in the report that indicates um, your injury was observed at the scene. Um, it was major in uh, probably with the rumors that you might have heard, like a catastrophic yeah. injury. Do we know how the collision occurred? Yes. Um, so the cause was determined to be a vehicle that... Um, Uh, looks like a failure to yield after stopping at the um, intersection and um, find out more about the, uh... so it looks like the uh, bicyclist was found at fault for not uh, um, yielding at the stop sign. Okay. All right. Am I... Sorry, can you repeat that? I, I didn't hear. Bicyclist was found at fault for not yielding at the stop sign. Okay. And then my other question was another pedestrian getting hit. I'm sorry for laughing at Laguna and Broadway. Do we have information on that? And are we adding this to our hot map now that we don't have student pair enough? Because it seems like we've had at least three in the past year and a half at Laguna and Broadway. Of, I thought so too. That yeah. would be my question. We've had like, this is. It's just a hot spot, clearly. It's a hot spot. So we should be looking at it pull that data for next yes year. have you been able to add uh, no okay do we i don't have a hot map um so can did you inherit it from or no it's from what i understand it's sort of a done from occasion to occasion and it um it's just not something that i have to work with okay do you have details on that um, yet? Thank you. <clears throat> this was a uh, vehicle uh, driver failed to yield to a uh, right away to a pedestrian crossing uh, within a marked crosswalk. I'm sorry, did you say in within the within the marked crosswalk? Yes. So that's the cause. Um, and injuries were complaint of pain reported at the scene. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Martos, you have your hand up, but now it's down. Did you have a question? Okay. No, Commissioner Lee asked the question that I was going to ask, so it's uh -huh. all good. Okay. Yep. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Commissioner Rebelos, you had a question. Yeah, so I'm trying to under, I, I, it's the, the, the injuries and the fault have over, and I appreciate your being so, providing so much clarity on your mm -hmm. answers. It's really useful. It, it's meaningful. I think people appreciate it. So on the Rollins, the, the bicycle accident mm -hmm. at Rollins, I'm trying to understand the intersection. So I, I know there is no Rollins and Caroline. And I can't, I, I, uh, I, I can't, I usually I pull up a map and I don't, I can't do that. There's a, there's a North, so North Caroline. Rollins, where is there's it? a North Caroline intersection. It's just uh, north of Rollins, of, uh, Oh, Rollins and Broadway. It's on the north. Of Broadway. Yeah, going north from Broadway. Those little shops are, and there's that kind of little. Yeah. All right. And there is a stop, always stop there, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. North, it's North Carolyn, not Carolyn. What? Light bulb. No, we're all kind of saying it the same. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now I got it. All right, so the bike was on which road? 
So the bike went through the stop sign, right? That's the report, yes. Um, pull that one back up. Okay. So here's the bicyclist was southbound on Rollins Road. South on Rollins, and the car was. It's like northbound Rollins, so somebody must have been making a turn. Oh, wow. No, I'm just, I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> we'll be here all night. <laughs> Obviously, uh, there's so many factors there. I mean, it was like 8 something in the morning, right? 8.50. Yeah, just shy of 9 a.m. Yeah. That's a four-way. Mm -hmm. It's broad, though. It's really, yeah. it's, it's really been it's tough. You would think the visibility would have been pretty good. So that's why oh, yeah. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> um, a lot of assumptions. It's just big. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. I don't have a question, but um, since this isn't really an agenda item, but a, a report item, um, do you think for next month, just because it does tickle some bells for a few of us that there have been, like in the past two years, could you see how many um, pedestrian car um, accidents or events occurred at um, Broadway and um, Laguna, Laguna um, for us? Is there a way to pull that data? Because it seems like this is like, not the first one in the very recent past. I'll try. Twitter, you can get five years worth, right? But I have to, um, yeah, it's, it's a matter of data processing or reporting them. And I rely on the accuracy of the location information that's been input for every accident. So if it was reported at in a particular address, it's not going to come up in time. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll do my best. Just a ballpark even yeah. helpful. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Wong. Yeah, I think. Okay, that's what I. Okay, okay. So there's already um, a plan to put the flashing light beacon like we have farther uh, west on Broadway. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. I think, um, thank you very much for that information. Super helpful. Mm -hmm. um, let's uh, then move on to item. 7E, um, Teaspoon Chair, Commissioner's Communications. Um, anything uh, been emailed or addressed to any of us? Okay, um, great. Okay, let's move on then to committee reports, agenda item number eight. Um, firstly, are there any public comments related to committee reports? Thank you. Okay, closing public comment. Moving on to um, the Burlingame Avenue pedestrian safety improvements. We could call that BAPC. <laughs> A good one. <laughs> I think we're just hoping to hear from Mr. Wong. I, say, I think we'll both take you up on your offer and uh, we look forward to We'd like that very much. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, can we call it BAPSI? Because I think that has a little ring to it. <laughs> All right. The next um, is the BIS school safety study. And we have no comment, but we're super happy. <laughs> so I, I do maybe one question sure. that is, at what point do we want to maintain the subcommittee for, now let's say it plays through in the next few months and you know, safety is exempt and all that. Do we still need a subcommittee to maintain for, for a monitoring purpose? Or is that something that we can do as collective within the commission in itself. I'm thinking it's more the latter than the former, but please correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's more the latter, but we can, uh, right now, I mean, I think the subcommittee should remain active during all of the implementation and the early feedback. Um, and then we can decide that that will be like our time frame, And then we can decide, you know, if things are going as like super fantastic and there's no modifications that are being suggested and followed, then we can disband, but we can always restart. It's more just in line with the comments from the city attorney? Yeah. No, that's... And what, what is the threshold, if you will? So That's exactly... I, I will take your lead on that. So. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. And okay. that's, you know, that's a limited scope for a limited period of time, yep. a specific measurable um, outcome. So, good question. And then 
Um, the US 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Connectivity, which I don't think we're going to shorten some acronyms. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of uh, screwed up. We, I, we had, uh, we've had, I, I'll just give you this. Uh, we've had two meetings. Um, I had wanted to, I made a nice little PDF that I had intended to get onto the agenda so I would make the press the report go quicker. Uh, I screwed that up because during the pre-agenda meeting, I completely forgot about it and didn't remember about it until after the agenda was published. So I will have it on the next one. And by then we will have had three meetings <laughs> and that will be the update. And then just a reminder, we will be presenting a final report in June. And after that, we will be disbanding that. Okay. Well, looking forward to seeing what you guys have been working on for three meetings. I think that will make it all the more interesting and juicy. Um, great. Um, Mr. Wall, let's move to um, item number nine. What are our future agenda items for next meeting? And uh, I'll check on uh, Oak Grove in California, the signal there. We'll get you, try, see if we can get you an update on that. Uh, I'll check with Mr. Sai, maybe at the point now that we've got direction, he can, we have something more detailed for BIS to, to discuss. And uh, the other one will be, we'll try to get you that Broadway, California update on that one. Okay, great. And then uh, potentially some of the other grant projects if we've moved for forward, uh, not necessarily these, but some of the other ones that we have that we'll uh, get in the queue for you guys to take a look at. Okay, um, Commissioner Ng. I, I was just gonna kind of refresh it again. Maybe it's not for necessarily next month's agenda, but certainly that we want to keep on the forward calendar is, you know, the, the improvements on Davis that you're okay. talking about for the, uh, uh, for the bicycle improvements oh. the, yeah. so the traffic calming and the, as well as the Marco Polo and Davis four-way inter or it's not really four-way, but this jointed four-way intersection <laughs> that, uh, exactly. And, you know, we'll, and I'm thinking in my mind just so we can capture all of that. So it, because it is on part of two projects, yep. as we discuss, uh, the, when we go through the outreach for the bike boulevard, we'll address that one as well because there's something has to be done with that to address it. And because again, we talked about that one, and it was, it, it it's it's we would have decided that Hi. night. <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll try to get that. So when we bring that up on the uh, the first outreach, I'll be part of the discussion what what to do at that intersection for bicyclists because we're going to be putting bikes or we're going to have cars going on Marco Polo. So we'll 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 combine that. So it's in one rather than two different places. I say, I, and I apologize in advance, but I'm likely to be repetitive about those two. Things. No, those that, that's fine. Forewarning. And that one is coming up, right? <laughs> we will try to get and we'll hopefully, uh, again, if I get that dated before our next meeting, if we are able to schedule something like that, I'll make sure you guys all know for the Emergency and Truesdale Davis uh, project. But uh, you guys will put it on next door. Uh, we'll put in the news and then for some of those impacted businesses, the biggest one being Mills Peninsula. We'll make sure those folks are notified on that one. So yeah, we'll follow through. Much appreciated. No worries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. I think with that, we adjourn the meeting. I think I'm gonna use the <laughs> Um, <laughs> And it was so fun to see everybody in person. Now we know how it works. <laughs> <laughs>